Great hockey teams have very short memories, never standing on their laurels, never wallowing in defeat, always moving forward. Because in hockey, a fresh start is never far away. Before every game, before every period, there is a clean sheet of ice waiting for something new to happen. It's an opportunity to put the past behind, an opportunity to grow, to become more united, to become stronger, to become something greater. This story actually begins with the end of a National Hockey League era in the state of hockey. March 1993, the Minnesota North Stars, an NHL franchise in the state of hockey for 26 years, will be relocating. North Stars owner Norm Green, who had unsuccessfully lobbied for a new arena for the franchise, announced the unthinkable. We're very proud of, of the process. We're, the team, I discussed it with them just a couple of days ago, and they, and they were very excited about about uh, coming to Dallas, we have their full support. But Green did not have full support. The move to Texas was received like a punch in the gut. Excited to present to Dallas the National Hockey League. <laughs> but people back in Minnesota were not happy. I don't know whether to be sad or mad, and I think I'm a little bit of both. I'm a hockey nut, and the guy cracked my shell, man. He cracked my shell. We're not going to miss you, Norm. We'll miss your team, but we won't miss you. He's leaving town for every reason but the fact that he can't make money here. He can make a lot of money here. We'll get a new team, and we'll all forget about Norm. And it's over. The St. Louis Blues are going to go to the playoffs. Minnesota's going to go to Dallas. What are the feelings and emotions of these players, many of whom have deep Minnesota face connections? I think it'll be a whole new set of emotions, Gary, now that they really have to face the reality of not making the playoffs and only have to look forward to getting to, to Dallas. Neil Broughton has been such a huge part of, part of the Minnesota hockey history. All Minnesota people right here. You can tell they don't want to go off for this final time. Ludwig and Brunson. Brunson, the all-time leader in games played, assist, point, silver stick award this year, University of Minnesota, United States Olympic team. All his career, 13 years with the Minnesota North Stars. And really, if the North Stars look back to where they lost this season, they have to look back to the day that the announcement was made about the team moving to Dallas. For nine games, they couldn't win. They couldn't even get a point. Some of these fans have been supporting the North Stars for a lot of years. Way back when, they wore green and yellow and white. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, glad it's all done and taken care of rather than going on a couple more weeks, you know, of uh, negotiating down there and not knowing, uh, you know, what's going to happen. But now, now we pretty much know. And, uh not about St. Paul, though in many ways it is. It, for St. Paul, well, what an incredible transforming opportunity to bring the NHL home and to have it housed in St. Paul, but certainly for all the state of Minnesota. The reality of not having an NHL franchise anymore took a long time to sink in, but time heals all wounds, 
and Minnesota went about doing something about this void. Four years later, the NHL expanded, and a location for one of those expansion franchises was obvious. Well, on behalf of all the four million fans plus in Minnesota, we're very proud to bring hockey back to a place of its real heritage in the United States. With that announcement, the Minnesota Wild was born. The first order of business was to name a front office. On September 2nd, 1999, the Wild named Doug Risebro as the team's executive vice president and general manager. Risebro's first primary duty was to find a head coach. He went back to his glory days with the Montreal Canadiens and hired his former teammate, Jacques Lemaire. Having guided the New Jersey Devils to a Stanley Cup in 1995, Lemaire had the credentials that Risebro felt a brand new team needed. The Wild participated in the first ever NHL draft, and on June 23, 2000, they selected a fast skating sniper from the Czech Republic named Marian Gabrick the with the third Wild overall their pick. First selection in the 2000 entry draft, and their first player ever are pleased to select Marian Gaborik from Trenčín, Slovakia. Marian Gaborik is a left winger who shoots left. He's a big man. He decided not to come to North America because he could not get trained. The Wild filled out the rest of their roster through an expansion draft and prepared for their inaugural training camp in September. Yeah, I think it's a weird situation for everyone. Uh, we all came from different teams and, you know, we're comfortable where we were at to come in today. And I mean, usually you see one or two fresh faces and today, I mean, we have 70 guys who really don't know each other. And, you know, so it's going to take some time to get used to playing with one another, but, uh, you know, we'll get started on the right track. You know, uh, everybody starts at zero, so uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Everybody's really excited. Uh, I think that it's a, it means a lot to a lot of guys here, and it uh, means a lot to you know to the owners and everything else. And it's, we're going to try and make the best of it. Minnesota hockey fans got their first chance to watch their new NHL franchise at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul in a preseason game against the Anaheim Ducks. Welcome to the XL Energy Center and the National Hockey League's return to Minnesota. Everything began for real for the Wild on October 6th in Anaheim, where the Ducks hosted the Wild in the NHL regular season opener. Five nights later, before a sellout crowd at the X, the Wild met the Philadelphia Flyers in their NHL home opener. The NHL was back in the state of hockey. Like any expansion team, the Wild struggled in the standings, but the love affair with the hockey fans of Minnesota was well underway. The Wild continued to establish themselves as a competitor in the NHL, and in season three, they began to really turn some heads. On January 16th, Marion Gabrick made history by becoming the first Wild player to compete in the NHL All-Star Game. With Gabrick's talent and the emergence of a gritty supporting cast, the Wild qualified for their first ever Stanley Cup playoff berth and promptly made quite a splash in their maiden voyage to the postseason. Gabrick in the face-off circle. Puck didn't come to him, now it will. In the middle, wide open. Deep shot, score! Gabrick, what a great play! It would be quite a tall order for the fledgling Wild as they drew the explosive Colorado Avalanche in the first round. And when the Avs surged to a three games to one series lead, it looked bleak for the underdog. Here is Park, shot, he scores!
Sergey Zoltak from Minnesota. Here's Brunette. Brunette's in. Andrew Brunette shot a score. Andrew Brunette in sudden death overtime. And Minnesota is moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minnesota Wilds have pulled off the upset. They have defeated the Colorado Avalanche in sudden death overtime. Oh, and like a proud father, John. Disappointment for the Avalanche, a team set up, especially considering the defending champs were knocked out by Anaheim. Sackick and Forsberg gave it everything they had. They ran into one of the more unique and more resilient teams that I've seen. I can't believe people are throwing stuff over there towards the wild on the ice. And what an outstanding play by Andrew Burnett. Zoltak gained the line, draw a pass to Burnett. He goes wide, patience, I got time. Bring it to the backhand and go beyond Patrick Waugh. A little curl, little toe drag, and he buys himself time because Waugh's sliding to the right. And Andrew Burnett is looking up to the skies. That is unbelievable. And no one will appreciate it more than Andrew Brunette. This was his first playoff appearance dating back to 1996 when he was a member of the Capitals. And this will be a difficult defeat to swallow for Joe Sackick and the proud Colorado Avalanche. Folks, it is like a funeral here at the Pepsi Center in Denver. 45 shots for the Avalanche. Andrew Burnett's the individual offensive hero scoring the goal. Defensively, though, Manny Fernandez. That save on Rob Blake in overtime. What a group. These are a bunch of castoffs nobody wanted for crying out loud. What a star-studded avalanche team with three times the payroll <laughs> of the Minnesota Wild. And Minnesota will be the perfect example of fiscal responsibility in the NHL. One opportunity and, and we felt great. You know, the best we felt all game was near the end of the game and in the third period into the overtime. So uh, we just wanted one chance. I mean, overtime game seven. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of uh, still in shock. I mean, uh, um, you know, you want to win and you want to compete. But, uh, you know, now that it's happened, it's almost like a shock. So we just got to, uh, uh, you know, celebrate for a day or two and then uh, get ready for the next series. That next opponent would be the Vancouver Canucks. And like they did in the opening round against the Avalanche, the Wild took their fans on another wild ride. Cinderella postseason finally struck midnight in the conference finals when they ran into red hot goalie J.S. Jaguar and the Anaheim Ducks. A four game sweep by the Ducks ended the Wilds' dreams of a Stanley Cup. Nobody there in white yet. Seven for 29 in the first round against Kosekaraj, the other defenseman. Look at it, Sakura looked outside. And put up the season. And just the second playoff here, Wilson has had. In front shot, another save, Jaguar. Rebound chance, Sakura. Play right there for Andrew Brunette. He's really good down low. That's Brunette. One skate on one. Delay behind the play. Delayed call. Ruchin on the delayed call. Shot. Score! Do you believe this? Got to it but couldn't hold it. Running again. Shot block. Short hand and Niedermeyer's got a step running and a broken stick. Niedermeyer scores! The second shot. The 2003 Magic would not translate into a string of playoff appearances. In fact, it wasn't until 2007 that the Wild qualified for the postseason again. During that season, Gabrick was once again the catalyst 
with some unbelievable goal scoring achievements. And for Minnesota, here's Gabbard score. The beat for the Gabbard. Power play for Minnesota. Perry behind the goal back in front. Gabbard score. Stopped the first time and then Gabbard. Birds off on up half wall. Gabbard is in tight. Good score. Gabbard back in here. trick for Gabbard. Power play goal. Demetra, bad angle shot on goal. Save. Rebound comes back out. A drive by Jones. The 2007 postseason run was a short one. Once again, it was the Anaheim Ducks foiling the wild Stanley Cup aspirations, this time in an opening round elimination. The Wild would break numerous franchise records during the 2008 season, including most goals and points in a season by Marion Gabrick. Also, Jock Lemaire recorded his 500th career coaching win as the Wild clinched their first ever Northwest Division title with a 3-1 win over the Calgary Flames on April 3rd, 2008. Six games and, uh, you know, hopefully we can carry it over to postseason, so this is a great accomplishment. It's, uh, it's a great feeling, and like you said, first my first year we didn't make the playoffs. We got pretty close. Last year we made the playoffs, now we won the division, so uh, you appreciate that a lot, and, uh, you know, it takes a lot of work, and uh, we did it this year this far, and now uh, we have to move it on to the playoffs and be ready when they when start. The Wild would again face the Colorado Avalanche in the first round of the playoffs, but this time the roles were reversed from 2003 and the Wild held home ice advantage. However, Minnesota came up short, being ousted in six games by the Avalanche. The Wild fell to ninth place in the Western Conference during the 2008-2009 season and missed the playoffs. Much of this was in part due to a lack of scoring and overall team offense. It was clear that a philosophy change was needed. The transformation began when the defensive-minded Jacques Lemaire resigned as the Wilds' head coach at season's end. Thank you. Thank you. Players, they, they're the guys that make me look good, so I got to thank them. Um, every year we start from Darby Hendrickson to who scored our first goal, and uh, Miko Koivu that scored our last goal. And all the guys that uh, were part of the organization. The most uh, important is the fans. Fans from Minnesota, you guys are unbelievable. General Manager Doug Riseborough was later fired, leading to a near complete turnover in the Wilds coaching and hockey management staff. Pittsburgh for now. And he'll be coming back. Owner Craig Leopold would hire former Pittsburgh Penguins assistant general manager Chuck Fletcher to act as standing GM. And some names have become apparent to me in the last 24 hours. Uh, as uh, news of the media advisory came out, I've been getting a lot of texts and, and emails. And that's a process I'll begin this weekend, and I hope next week to start interviews. Later that summer, Fletcher selected Todd Richards as the Wilds' new head coach. A busy off-season for a franchise seeking a new level of National Hockey League success. I understand that there's only 30 of these positions in the world. And uh, to, to be selected, to be chosen to come in and, and be the second coach in Wild history. I know what hockey means to the people here in Minnesota. Unfortunately, all of these changes did not provide a quick fix. The 2009-2010 season was another disappointment. The Wild missed the playoffs again, forcing Minnesota's die-hard fans to remain patient during this rebuilding phase. I think there's a collective agreement here that uh, there, the team is definitely good enough to, to have made it. First of all, individually, everyone in, in, in this locker room has to uh, think about what, what we can do better. Stability is what the Wild were seeking, and during the offseason, they decided to provide one of their key players with a long-term contract. Nico Koivu signed a seven-year agreement and was named the team's first ever full-time captain. Dianton Hall made the save. Bianton in the wild. Score! Koivu from Bianton. With the 2010-2011 season vault the Wild back into the Stanley Cup playoffs? The answer was no. 
Two consecutive non-playoff seasons made for a rather short stint as head coach for Richards, and he was fired on April 11, 2011. You feel bad about it, you feel uh, uh, disappointed as well, and, uh, and I think that's uh, something for all of us to realize as well. That, uh, but like I said before, uh, we're all in, in this together and, and everybody has to, uh, has, has to think about what to do better. The interviews are now done. I may have a follow-up conversation or, or two on the telephone with, uh, with a couple candidates. At this point, I'm down to three. The Wild were at a crossroads. Should they try to lure a big-name coach from elsewhere or stay within their own organization? The answer came on June 17th, and the Wild zeroed in on Mike Yo, the coach of their American Hockey League affiliate, the Houston Arrows. To introduce Mike Yo as the new head coach of the Minnesota Wild. He has built an impressive coaching resume over the past 11 seasons, helping lead teams to five finals and being a part of the Stanley Cup winning team in Pittsburgh in 2009. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mike Yo. Uh, I knew that I was ready. I knew that uh, when the day came, for me to be a head coach, whatever situation comes up, I'll be ready for it. I look forward to those challenges. I've seen them before, and uh, I'm ready to talk. Please welcome. Less than a month later, the NHL came to Minnesota as St. Paul hosted the 2011 draft. The Wild held the 10th overall pick in that draft and selected a talented defenseman from Sweden named Jonas Brodin, another young star of the future for a team seeking stability. With the 10th selection in the 2011 entry draft, please join me in welcoming the newest citizen to the state of hockey from Faryastad of the Swedish Elite League, Jonas Brodin. We have a trade to announce. Minnesota trades. Brent Burns and its own second round draft pick in the 2012 entry draft to San Jose for Devin Setaguchi and Charlie Coyle and San Jose's first round draft pick, number 28 in this year's draft. The 2011-2012 season started in promising fashion. In fact, by mid-December, the Wild were sitting atop the NHL standings. But multiple injuries and a dreadful second half of the season knocked the Wild out of playoff contention for the fourth consecutive year. Clearly something big needed to happen in the state of hockey, and this offseason produced a monumental free agent bonanza for the Wild. They signed winger Zach Parise, a Twin Cities native, whose dad, J.P., starred for the Minnesota North Stars. But that wasn't the only free agent signing for the Wild that summer. They also acquired defenseman Ryan Suter. Each player signed identical 13-year, $98 million contracts. Now nobody could deny Minnesota's commitment for the future. busy offseason was overshadowed by the NHL lockout until it was resolved in January 2013. With a shortened regular season, every game was huge in the playoff chase. The Wild, teetering on the edge of playoff contention in April, traded for one last piece of their rebuilding puzzle. Goal scoring forward Jason Pominville was acquired from the Buffalo Sabres just in time to help clinch the eighth and final Western Conference playoff spot. For the fourth time in franchise history, the Wild would play postseason hockey. First, he does into the empty net, and Minnesota will advance to the playoffs for the first time in five years. 3-1 for the Wild. We're happy that we're in, um, but uh, keeping in mind we've got the attitude that we want to go down and win. We're not there to... Um, 
just be happy that we made it. We, uh, we, we, think, we, can, we think we can beat them, and um, we're going to play as hard as we can. The Wild drew the team with the best overall regular season record, the Chicago Blackhawks in the opening round. This year, Clutterbuck onside at the line, into the circle, he scores! Clutterbuck has Minnesota on the board first. Kane into the Minnesota zone. Feeds the wing and they score. Marion Hosa beats Josh Harding, and it's a 1-1 game. Rush up into play. Ball in front. Oh, it's gone! Parisi! Down for Cullen. Turning there. Coming by as Oduya. Long score! Wild would lose the best of seven series in five hard-fought games. A disappointing end to a whirlwind season. But the building blocks for that long-awaited Stanley Cup contender appear to be in place. In hockey, the play is constantly changing direction. And it is the teams that initiate that change that end up finding success. So after their most transformative off-season in team history, the Minnesota Wild are working to put all the new pieces together and making sure that the changes they have made are taking the team in the right direction. Because the thing about change is that it does not guarantee success, but when done right, it can put you on the path to becoming something greater. Back to 
to Walls. West Walls stops. Gets it towards Nielsen. Big run. He scores! Up on the left side. Demetra moving in to Gavin. He scores! They're onside. Here's Paul from the other He's going to go with Bacchus. That's a bad choice for David Bacchus. Clayton walks in front. Shoots. He scores! Penalty hey, forthcoming. And this is going to be emotional all day long. Now it's getting personal. Comes free, Nolan tried to center. A shot, he scores! To keep the game alive, stopped by Harding. Wild win. Spurgeon to Koivu, he shoots, he scores! Hello, rivalry. It's now in front, score! Darby Hendrickson! Score! Rebound off the pipe, a shot, he scores! Hands it off to Koivu, a shot. Parigi scores! Across the line, here's Brunette. Brunette, he moves. Brunette back in, he scores! 